Hi, this is the Monday evening update on Hurricane Dorian. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions regarding the storm, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local officials for the best information for you. Well, we continue to have what is really just a horrific situation for the northern Bahamas with a stalled out hurricane uh, sitting uh, basically on top of Grand Bahama, this island that's uh, easier seen on the radar loop here from Mark Nissenbaum at FSU, showing the island here in white and the hurricane was on top of it this morning, has barely moved north during the course of the day, and at the moment in the last several hours just really hasn't moved at all, uh, just really sitting still here. The recon plane is in there and just finding it in the same spot over and over again, very close to stationary, this hurricane right now. It is weaker with the pressure up to 941. It was under 920 yesterday, and this is a consequence of the storm interacting with the island and generating cooler water beneath it by sitting still here for a long period of time, but a truly horrendous situation in uh, Grand Bahama, and we've had incredible storm surge flooding in Freeport on the western side of the island, and it hasn't even really been in the eye wall for most of the day, and that's an important reminder is that you do not need to be in the eye wall for storm surge to be very uh, severe, and we don't need a direct hit on the coastline as this comes farther north uh, for storm surge to become a problem. And speaking of the turn toward the north, we're kind of still waiting for it. The fact that the storm has stalled out implies that the turn is about to occur. Right now what we have is a ridge to the east of the storm. It was previously north of the storm, guiding the storm toward Florida. It's now getting eroded by this advancing trough. You can sort of see that in the boundary of dark gray advancing toward the southeast, which has now kind of eroded this part of the ridge. And so now we're left with a ridge to the east of the storm with southerly flow trying to push the storm north. But we also have a ridge that's a little hard to see here over the Gulf of Mexico with steering flow out of the opposite direction. So we have competing steering flows from the ridges on both sides of the storm and the net effect here is about zero so the storm is really not moving. Now as this uh, little trough does come down it's going to provide just enough of a kick to set this moving just off toward the north northwest and get it going on its way uh, to eventually the north and northeast. Uh, but again, exactly where this movement takes it relative to the Florida coastline is the current concern, at least for the United States. And we've got uh, a couple of things to note today. Uh, we'll recall from yesterday's video that we talked about one of the concerns with some of the h -wharf runs that were still taking this ashore uh, was that uh, it was showing a weaker storm correctly because of the ocean cooling beneath it and that might contribute to it getting a little farther west. The good news is that we've seen uh, some positioning changes today because the storm has not gotten quite as far west overnight uh, as it was expected to. So this is the h -wharf valid for 2 p.m. today, so a couple hours before the recording of this video. And you can see that the last couple runs have progressively gotten farther from Florida because the storm honestly has not gotten very far west. So the H wharf had this here at this point, not here. And this is important because while the H wharf does try to nudge it uh, left uh, during tomorrow and Wednesday, the fact that it's starting from a point farther east today means that even if that nudge west is correct, it's still offshore, at least on the model runs now. So if we look at the most recent run of that same model, it is now offshore instead of onshore, which is good news for Florida. Uh, reminding you, though, that this is still a potentially damaging event for the coastline with plenty of storm surge coming in uh, as the storm moves up the coast. And this hurricane force wind field in purple is getting to the space coast here. And this is where this point sticks out is especially where we might see some of the higher winds. And of course, we could have heavy rainfall immediately near the coast that could cause inland flooding, with storm surge being the greatest concern here as the storm comes up. And you can see that it comes right up the coast to uh, east of Jacksonville, and we again have storm surge as we go on and on up the coast. And as this is expected to parallel the entirety of the southeast U.S. coastline, if it doesn't even make landfall, storm surge all throughout the coastline is likely to be a problem. Now, most models are pretty in line with this idea. I'm showing you the h warp here, but most models continue to show that the track offshore by maybe 50 miles remains the most likely option as it has been for the last two to three days. This is the European Ensemble from weathernerds.org showing uh, the 12Z set of possibilities from the European model specifically. You can see it all starts off here, and we have this spread as it goes up the coast, and you can see that only a handful of members now uh, show this getting uh, 
on shore of Florida, and even those members here sort of get west of Grand Bahama before making that move north-northwestward. And again, today, signs are that the storm is not really inclined to move to this side of the island before turning north. Instead, it's kind of biding its time here uh, just north of the center of the island. And if this is its launching point northward, if you will, odds are increasing that it stays offshore. But we still can't rule out wobbles toward the left, and we're talking about a track that might only be 30, 40, 50 miles off the coast. Any little change as we watch during the next day or two could matter for Florida. So we're continuing to keep a close eye on things. This is the National Hurricane Center map showing in red. Hurricane warnings are here for a reason. Keep in mind that the track is shown offshore. These hurricane warnings aren't necessarily just precautionary in case the track shifts left. They're quite real in the sense that the hurricane force wind field does expand a little bit as the storm weakens and we've had an expanding wind field after the storm underwent an eyewear replacement cycle uh, today, and now that the weakening is occurring, this wind field does broaden a little bit. So if you shift this all the way up the coastline, uh, this area of strong winds could overlap the coast even if the eye is offshore. So these hurricane warnings are there for a reason. Definitely take precautions. Four to seven feet of storm surge is the primary concern at the coast, and we can see storm surge warnings for a good section of coast and watches farther north now extending to Savannah, Georgia and uh, we're going to see that probably continue on up the coast as storm surge and inland rainfall become primary concerns for uh, the Carolinas as we go farther out in time as well. We're still talking about uh, Wednesday and Thursday before we're worrying about the Carolinas, but that's coming soon. And again, we, we have a track that's getting pretty close to the coast here and several model runs do have Doreen moving ashore either in northeastern South Carolina or coastal North Carolina. And depending on what kind of inner core is left by the storm, by the time the storm gets up here, we could see severe wind impacts if the storm remains a formidable hurricane. We'll have to see how it interacts with the Gulf Stream on its way north here. What kind of structure will it have off of Jacksonville? That's going to be important for what happens later. Uh, we're going to have to wait and see on that. Right now the storm is upwelling water beneath it and that could erode the inner core with time depending on when it finally starts moving here. Uh, we'll keep an eye out for that as it uh, parallels the Florida coastline, uh, but regardless of wind potential up here, we're going to have a surge that will continue to be a problem even if the core winds weaken. Remember the storm has been expected for some time to weaken on its way up the coast in terms of maximum winds in the eye wall, but storm surge is not tied directly to the winds in the eye wall. It's also tied to the storm size, which is going to keep getting larger as the storm comes up the coast, which means storm surge potential really isn't going to decrease as the storm moves up in here. And so that's going to continue to be the primary concern is flooding from the ocean and also flooding inland from rainfall as the storm continues to expand and drop rain on its left side as it comes up the coast. And uh, this will be something to keep in mind. Water is the primary hazard up here, uh, probably not wind if we're talking about the Carolinas, but we could have some of that wind too. Again, we'll see what the storm structure is like in a day or two. So again, the trends today are that the storm has uh, stalled now, awaiting its move toward the north, and it has stalled in a position that's a little bit farther to the east than it was supposed to be on some of the concerning model runs for Florida, and so this is going to make it harder for the eye to actually make landfall on the Florida coast, but we can't completely rule it out yet, and we're talking about a most likely track that's only about 50 miles offshore, that's a little too close for comfort, and the hurricane force wind field may still reach the coastline on this left side, and we do have hurricane warnings on a section of the Florida coastline for that reason, and storm surge is the primary concern all up and down the southeast U.S. coast as the storm starts heading slowly up as we go throughout the rest of the week. And of course, those in the Bahamas are certainly in our thoughts today as they've undergone a horrific period of 24 to 48 hours, and it is not over yet. That's it for tonight. Thanks for watching.